Hello, welcome again to our monthly meditations. Lovely to have you all connect with us again as we continue this series of reflections on the teachings of the great mystics and saints of the Church about the human soul. The wonder of the human soul is really a primary journey in life to come in to realize who God has created us to be. And we can only do this if we discover the nature of our human soul. It's interesting the mystics that we've been looking at, St. Clair of Assisi, St. Teresa of Avila, and in some ways the Celtic mystics, um, they all speak about the vastness of the human soul. They use different metaphors. St. Clair tells us that the entire creation cannot contain God, but one human soul can. And this is because a human soul can love. And God is love. So wherever there is love, there is God. St. Teresa of Abla, looking for her metaphor for the human soul, spoke of it, of it being a huge castle with millions of rooms, and everywhere is full of something new and interesting. The mystic we're going to look at today is the great English mystic Julian of Norwich, a wonderful woman who lived in the 14th century. She was an anchorite, and uh, an anchorite is someone who chooses to be resident in a cell adjacent normally to a church and they remain there. In some cases they were even walled into it, which seems very extreme to us. But they never moved from that place. No, it would be quite generously spaced, be like an apartment. And they spent their lives there in the presence of God 
next to the church. They would have an opening window that looks into the church through which they can receive Holy Communion. So Julian was one of those, which is different from a hermit. A hermit is someone who lives a solitary life, but they can move around. They can go on pilgrim, pilgrimages and so on. Anyway, to get back to Julian. Julian saw the human soul as a vast city. That's how she describes it. And Jesus sits as king in the very center, ruling all. She says about our souls, we may never come to full knowing of God till we know first clearly our own soul. So this is very similar to what Teresa of Avila says when she is describing the interior castle. She, when she was young, had an extraordinary near-death experience. Uh, she was, people thought she was dying, and she did too. She believed she was dying. And when she went into this other realm, uh, as we might think of it, she had 13 extraordinary visions, or what she calls showings, of the Passion of Christ. They were profoundly real, and she witnessed them all, and was profoundly affected for the rest of her life by these uh, showings, or visions, or revelations. And during the rest of her life, like she wrote them down immediately after she recovered, and she lived for quite a long time, actually, after that, um, but she wrote them while they were all fresh in her mind, but she spent the rest of her life reflecting on the meaning of these visions because she believed Christ wanted her to do this for the church, for all Christians. So she became quite a wonderful theologian in the way she was able to extract theologically the meaning of the revelations. And so she wrote a much longer book with the same title, The Revelations of Divine Love. And uh, it is from this book that we have taken the reflection that we're going to use for today's meditation. So let us begin to prepare for Julian coming to teach us what God has revealed to her for the whole church. So try to sit in a relaxed position, two feet on the ground, on the floor, and, and withdraw into your inner self. You do this through closing your eyes and also through taking deeper breaths than you normally would. So just take some deep breaths to relax. And just be aware as you're breathing to follow your breath inward. As you breathe in, enter into the depths of your own inner being where your true soul presence is to be encountered. Enter into that stillness, into the silence, and wait for Julian who will come to you now to speak to you about what Christ has revealed to her.
everything that I now say to you about myself applies to all Christians, for I am taught that this is what our Lord intends in this spiritual revelation. It is God's will and my wish that you accept it with as much joy and delight as if Jesus had shown it to you as he did to me. There is no creature that is made that can know how much and how sweetly and how tenderly our Creator loves us. The greatest honour we can give Almighty God is to live gladly because of the knowledge of His love. Our Lord is with us, keeping us and leading us into the fullness of joy. For our Lord intends this to be our endless joy, that he who will be our bliss when we are in heaven is also our protector while we are here on earth. He is our way and our heaven in true love and trust. God did not say, you will not be troubled or you will not be hard pressed or you will not be disquieted. But God said, you will not be overcome. God wants us to pay attention to these words and always to be strong in faith and trust. For God loves us and delights in us. And so God wills us to love and delight in God and trust mightily in God and all shall be well. God is goodness. God is life. God is truth. God is love and peace. His love and his wholeness cannot allow him to be angry. For I saw truly that it is against the nature of God's strength to be angry and against the nature of God's wisdom and against the nature of God's goodness. God loved us before he made us and his love has never diminished and never shall. God said to me, I love you and you love me, and our love will never be divided in two. For your benefit, I allow sin to fall to you against your will. I am taking care of you, believe me.
our Lord said to me, Are you well satisfied that I suffered for you? I said, Yes, good Lord, all my thanks to you. Yes, good Lord, blessed may you be. Then Jesus, our good Lord, said, If you are satisfied, I am satisfied. It is a joy, a bliss, an endless delight to me that I ever suffered my passion for you. And if I could suffer more for you, I would suffer more. God said to me, See that I am God. See that I am in everything. See that I do everything. See that I have never stopped ordering my works, nor ever shall eternally. See that I lead everything on to the conclusion I ordained for it before time began. By the same power, wisdom and love with which I made it. How can anything be amiss? And I saw that truly nothing happens by accident, but everything by God's wise providence. We were made for love. We will all enter our Lord fully aware of and fully possessing God. This will last forever. We will truly see, fully feel, spiritually hear, delectably breathe in, and sweetly drink God. Our good Lord said to me, I can make all things well. I know how to make all things well. I desire to make all things well. I will make all things well. And you will see with your own eyes that every kind of thing will be well. So, on the last day, we will clearly see in God the secret counsels that now are hidden from us. Then, none of us will be stirred to say, Lord, if we had only known these things, then all would have been well. Instead, we will all say with one voice, Lord, may you be blessed, for it is thus, all is well.